So you want to beat the cactus, the electric pig, the rock thrower, and the wolf. Oh, and last but not least, the snake plant, which is the end boss. Well, you've come to the right place. If you haven't watched the first part of my chapter 7 guide, I recommend you have a look at that first before watching these boss guides. Remember, we'll be going through every single boss, their strengths, their weaknesses, the best way to beat the bosses, and on top of that, it'll be with all of their variations. As I said in the previous video, there are 12 bosses in chapter 7 with one end boss. Every boss in chapter 7, except for the end boss, have 5 variations each. This may vary with mobs and level layout. There are three sections in chapter seven. Level one to three is section one. Levels four to six is section two. Level seven to nine is section three. Level 10 is the end boss. My name is Teeds and I make many archery videos from guides, tier lists, news, updates, and more. Please do subscribe and click the bell for more archery content. I'll be giving a difficulty rating on each boss based on their sections. Do note that every boss can actually turn out much easier with enough practice. The later bosses are just harder because we don't reach them as often, therefore not getting as much practice in comparison to the earlier bosses. With the variations, when I say take out the mobs first, this does not mean ignore the boss and go straight for the mobs. You have to do it strategically, with good timing, otherwise you'll take a lot of unnecessary damage. Patiently approach the mobs that you need to focus on with some of the variations. Remember, you can level reroll your variations. If you find one variation harder than the other, feel free to reroll it. Before we begin, I just want to really emphasize these bosses, in my opinion, should be way harder than any of the previous bosses, because we get way less practice with them. But like any boss in Archero, with enough practice, you'll be able to comfortably defeat them over time, or at least find it a bit easier. Also, sorry if my voice sounds weird, I just woke up and I wanted to record this right away. Boss number one, the cactus. Difficulty, hard. Now personally, I find this boss the hardest boss in chapter seven. I pretty much got the pattern down, but I don't have a high chance of surviving this boss. I think in all my footage here for this boss, except for maybe two of the variations, I end up dying. I honestly have to work on my execution. Okay, pattern. He has high attack speed, has a jump where once he lands, he will fire one fast moving wind projectile in each diagonal direction. He has an attack where it shoots three fast projectiles, one straight and two diagonally with a red warning line. He has an attack where he shoots 5 to 8 fast projectiles in a general direction. Weaknesses? Ice swords. Once I started implementing this ability, my whole run changed. Personally, I only struggle with this boss. When he jumps at you, the ice swords will sometimes stop him in its place. Wingman, slow projectile, shield guard, and invincibility. Since ice effects can cancel out his attacks, it does cancel out his jump. This means he may jump right after again, so always anticipate this, at least now you can expect it. With this boss, you don't want to stay still for too long. He doesn't really give you a warning on when he's going to jump, so I usually take a few shots, move a bit, take a few shots, move a bit. When he does jump on you, do not move diagonally. Move straight up, straight down, straight left, or straight right, because you're most likely going to get hit by his fast diagonal wind projectile. When he is firing his projectile shots at you, do not do full dodge movements. Just move slightly to the left or the right. If you run around, it's harder to avoid. For his three line projectiles, just move out of the way from the red. Always anticipate a jump when you enter the level. For variations, you want to try and get rid of the mobs as soon as possible, but your main priority is avoiding the attacks of the cactus. With these mobs, you may just get rid of them over time. Variation one, dragons. One dragon on your left and your right. Get out of the way as soon as you can. They're slow moving and they don't chase you. Their attacks are not super long range, so you can just stay on the other side of the map if you can't kill them quickly enough. Variation two, mini cactus. Two small cactus that fire one line wind projectile. Try and get rid of the one on the right of you first. Variation three, mummies. They do not chase you. Four will be placed on the level. You'll get rid of them over time, Try and stay out of their general area. Variation four, fire ghost. Two will be placed on the level. They will hover around most of the time. We'll fire a single red projectile at you. Variation five, plant. One snake plant on both sides of the boss, so total two. We'll fire red projectiles at your direction and then hide. Moving on to boss number two, the electric pig. Difficulty, 
average to hard. Pattern, all the electric balls will split into two tiny balls. These balls will split roughly after three seconds. Fires two electric balls in your general direction. Fires two electric balls that go to your precise direction. Fires three electric balls, two going behind him or on the sides of him, and one going to your precise direction. The tiny balls will bounce twice on the wall before dispersing. Weaknesses, shield guard, wingman, and invincibility. When invincibility comes up, it's really nice to use just to run through the levels to try and get into a better side. Tips, just like the fire pig, slow projectile may also stack up the attacks, so keep this in mind that it may make it harder. You can stay along the wall, but if you're panicky like me, because sometimes the balls split right along the wall, you may run into a bunch of them, trying to avoid the damage. I'm pretty good at watching the orbs, so sometimes I actually just run in between them all. However, the wall method should be easier, so there are two ways to do this. You can stay as far away as possible from the boss. This works if you can consistently move away from it, but it may be hard due to all the projectiles. As they do split after 3 seconds, the further you are away from them, the further they're going to split away from you. Otherwise, the second method which can be harder in another way is to be close to the boss and try and avoid the initial projectiles head on. That way the projectiles will bounce against the wall and split away from you. If you have a level that has part of the map split off by the water where you can't reach, these work well for this method as the balls are most likely going to split behind you. Do not camp in the corners. Now moving on to variations. Try and focus on taking out the mobs. Keep in mind with all the projectiles flying around, you have to tread carefully. Variation 1. The lightning generators. I honestly find this variation the easiest because you just have to avoid the general area. Spawns 2 on the level. These generators will randomly place attacks with warnings on the map. Just stay out of the area. Take these out as fast as you can, destroying the closest one first. Variation 2. The fire bombs. Spawns two on the level. We'll throw bombs that leave a damaging fire effect on the ground. Variation three, the spiders. Spiders that walk around randomly, they do not target you. Spawns three of them. Not a huge threat, but you may run into them. Variation four, purple ghosts. Fires a line projectile towards you. Can make it difficult to move around freely as it zones out a path. Most of the time, they do not fire frequently. Variation five, skeletons. Difficult if you can't take them out quickly. Spawns two that will chase you. If you don't take them out quickly, keep moving away from them. Boss number three, the spinning rocks or spinning golems or rock throwers. Difficulty, hard. Pattern, widespread shot with seven large stones in all directions it's facing. Spawns smaller versions of itself. Spawns as many small rocks as it wants. I've only reached three at a time. These small rocks will fire three widespread projectiles at you. The boss spins around in a melee attack, chasing you. Weaknesses, Ice Sword. Just like the Cactus boss, the spinning melee attack can actually be countered by Ice Swords. Wingman, Slow Projectile, Shield Guard, and Ricochet. Tips, take out the mini golems as quick as possible. The more you let the small ones spawn, the harder it will be. Stay as far away as possible from the boss. The further you are, the easier it is to avoid his projectiles. Same goes for the mini versions. However, the boss takes priority. When he starts spinning, run around in like a wonky square or triangle. Focus on running away from him until he stops spinning. When he stops, anticipate another spin. And remember, ice swords can also counter this if he does reach you. You're only safe from the melee attack once he starts throwing projectiles or spawning golems again. Watch your character. This makes it much easier to avoid all the rock projectiles. Variations? Take out the mobs as soon as possible, as the boss does spawn mini golems. The more monsters, the harder it will be. Variation 1, Skeletons. Spawns 2. One will be on the right of you as you enter. Variation 2, Lightning Generators. Spawns 2 on the opposite corners on opposite sides. Avoid the lightning areas. It will warn you. Variation 3, Ghost Glitches. Two glitches that will split into two smaller ones. Does not target you. You're most likely going to run into them, so take them out quickly. Just like the snake boss glitches, the boss will not die once you get rid of all the health. The boss will require a few more hits. Variation 4, mini boss. Two bosses. This looks scary, but it's actually not. I find this one the easiest variation. Only one of them is the boss, 
The other one is just a version of it that only fires five smaller rock projectiles. And variation five, mini rocks. One mini golem on both sides near the top, so total two. Take them out first, remember, take out all the mobs first if you can. All right, moving on to boss number four, the wolf. Difficulty, easy. Pattern, dashes at you, and it always dashes three times. Jumps at you usually once, but may jump again once or twice. It's slow, so you should be able to avoid it. Weaknesses, just like the cactus boss, the ice swords stops it in its tracks. So as you can see, the ice swords actually help a lot of the harder bosses in the end. However, resetting the ability, it will dash again. The ice swords work nicely here for the times you're about to get hit by the boss, but it's not really needed as well because this boss is actually pretty simple. Tips, when it's dashing, count the dashes. Remember, always three before a longer pause or jump. When it dashes at you, you can hit it maybe twice depending on what weapon you're using. I recommend to always run in a direction that he's not facing, because if you're running in the direction he is facing, then you're most likely going to get hit. After the boss jumps, you can get in maybe three or four shots depending on what weapon you're using. If you want to despawn the devil, the AoE blast of the jump only does one damage. Variations? Do not chase the mobs. Focus on avoiding the attacks of the wolf. You will take out the mobs eventually. Chasing the mobs will make it harder to follow the pattern of the wolf attacks. Of course, you can always just run into the general direction, but your location will always depend on where the wolf pushes you. So what I do basically with the mobs here, instead of attacking the wolf, I attack the mob. For example, the dog dashes once, that gives me a couple of shots. I will focus the attack on the mob if I can reach it, otherwise it just goes to the boss. Variation 1, bats. Spawns two bats, one on the right and one on the left. Make sure to move out of the way, otherwise you may be hit by the dash. Variation 2, the snake plants. Four snake plants that will shoot in your direction. There is one in each corner. They will hide and pop up again to attack, repeating the cycle. Variation 3, laser bats. Anything with laser bats is hard in my opinion. There are three laser bats. To set in their attack, you have to stand there for a second. However, this can be tricky because the wolf is chasing you. So I kind of let the red line follow me even though it's harder to avoid. Try to get rid of these bats as soon as possible. Variation 4, mini wolves. Two grey wolves that only dash in straight directions. Two brown wolves that dash in all directions. Focus on avoiding the boss's attacks. You will take out these wolves over time. Variation 5, skeletons. Two skeletons, one on each side of the wolf as you enter. And that is all for section 3. Now we're finally up to the last boss of chapter 7, the end boss, the double snake plants. Pattern, hides in the ground. When it pops up, it fires five medium pace projectiles in all directions. When it's popped up, it will fire one big fast red projectile that will split on contact into eight smaller slower projectiles. After that, it always just goes back into the ground. He always attacks once and then goes back down, attacks once and then goes back down, and it'll always be that fast red projectile. These fast projectiles will split against the wall. Weaknesses, wingman, Slow projectile, invincibility, walls, some ice effects, so with the ice effects there is a con and a pro. The ice effect can cancel out the boss's animation, so it can keep it in one place. However, it can also ruin the flow as sometimes you may have them both fire at the same time, which makes it easier. But that is all dependent on luck. Tips: Ideally, you want the boss's attacks to be simultaneous, as it will be easier to dodge. However, I did beat the boss like this, so it's very possible to defeat them without that luck. Your abilities will make or break your boss fight here. I actually don't find this boss that hard, but due to the lack of practice we get, it obviously feels harder. Try and stay as far away from the boss as possible. It makes it easier to dodge the attacks. Do not make contact with the wall. You can stay close to the wall, but do not touch it. This is because the big projectile will split against the wall, causing two of the smaller projectiles to run down the wall. Some people have said to stay along the back wall because apparently they don't like it to spawn there. However, I had the opposite experience. They spawned there. So what I found is that you want to have them both far away from you or ideally at least one of them. In this footage, I actually run around until they spawned in an area that was a reasonable distance. I didn't stay only on one side of the wall. I just ran around dodging until they didn't spawn there. So I would say basically what you have to do is do not position yourself where you're making physical contact with the wall. 
Move around until you find a place where it doesn't spawn often. In this case for me, it didn't spawn at the bottom side of the map. My progress with this boss got a lot better over time. Before, when I first fought him, I only got maybe 3 or 4 hits in. And then over time, I started getting half health. And then I was finally able to beat the boss. And I didn't use any revives or any extra life for this run. But I've only beaten him once. And I would try to do it again. But it's so hard to get past the bosses in between. And I'm talking about the cactus boss. So remember, just practice, practice, and practice. And that is all for the in-depth chapter 7 guide. If you sat through all of the videos, it was nice to have you here with me. After two months and a couple weeks of work, I'm glad to say I'm completely done with chapter 7 until hero mode. If you have any of your own tips for chapter 7 or about any of these bosses, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Please do subscribe and click the bell for more archery content. I will be releasing a chapter 8 guide, a farming guide, and a chapter 8 first run reaction video very soon. I thank you very much for watching. Any likes and comments would be super rad and I hope to see you again. Bye!